Hello everyone, it's time for another edition of the Top 5 Most Missed Math Questions. it's time for your top five most missed operations with real numbers and expressions questions at number five two monomials are shown below what is the least common multiple of these monomials okay we need to know what least common multiple means it means a number that they are both they would both be factors of they, they would both go into evenly so when you start thinking about just the number portion alone it should be kind of obvious that the number that they would both go into has to be at least as big as they are at least as big as 3000 so these options over here are horrible um there's no way a b or c could possibly be the least common multiple for these now let's go ahead and do this problem as if there were better choices that might actually tempt us to answer them so just like we did with numbers, we can use the magical division ladder. What's the division ladder, you say? I've forgotten about that. We're gonna take both these numbers and we're gonna put them in a little box that almost kind of looks like an upside down long division uh, bracket here. Boom, boom. All right, so the goal here is to pick any number that can go into these two terms. So I'm gonna start with the coefficients. All right, maybe you didn't see a lot of options, but you saw, okay, they're both divisible by 10. So 10 goes into 450 45 times. We bring down the x squared y to the fifth. It would go into 3,300 times. Uh, so we have uh, 300 now. Okay, well, clearly there's more that goes into just the coefficients. Five would go in here. And so I'm now at nine x squared y to the fifth. And five would go in here 60 times some construction being done around me here try to talk louder than it all right still there's some numbers that go in I see a three that goes in so three goes into nine three times x squared y to the fifth and into 60 20 times and we still have the fourth and y to the third at this point nothing goes into the three and the 20 anymore so we've taken care of the coefficients but let's look at the variables x squared means x times x meaning two factors of x x to the fourth means four factors of x. So we're looking for common factors. Wait, I thought we were looking for the least common multiple. We are, I promise. We're using the greatest common factor to help us get there. So since they both have two factors of x, they both have x squared in common. So if we divide these terms by x squared, x squared divided by x squared is one. One times anything is itself. So now we just have three y to the fifth. And if we divide 20x to the fourth y to the third by x squared, we're really gonna reduce that exponent by two uh, using our exponent property. So now we have y squared, uh, x squared y to the third. Okay, we're getting closer. Do they have anything else in common? Wait, half y is in common. In fact, three factors of y. So that makes three y to the second using our subtraction property, you know, our, our quotient property for exponent, which says to subtract the exponents, and 20x squared. Okay, what did we just do? So all of this is really helping us find two things. It actually helps us find the GCF over here, even though we weren't exactly looking for the GCF. But now, if we take and we multiply all these numbers in this beautiful L-looking shape I've made here, that will help us find the least common multiple. So, look at all the coefficients, all the numbers. 10, 5, and 3. Uh, 5 times 3 is 15, times 10 is 150. And we've got 3 and 20 down here is 60, so we've got 150 times 60 is 9,000. That's all the numbers, 10, 5, 3, the 3 down here and the 20 down here, multiply together to 9,000. Let's look at all the variables, look at x's. We have an x squared here and an x squared after the 20. So that's x to the fourth, and y to the third, and oh, that's uh, y to the second here, it gives us y to the fifth. Dun, da, da, dun, that is letter D, we found it. Uh, interestingly, uh, they might have been trying to trick us because letter C is the GCF. So if you got those two confused in your head, you might have been tricked into letter C. But uh, if you knew the least common multiple, it should have been obviously a D. Number four. A theme park charges $50 a day for a day pass and $110 for a week pass last month. <laughs> last month, 4,432 day passes were sold and 979 week passes were sold, which is the closest estimate of the total amount of money paid for the day and week passes for last month. Okay, we're estimating. Estimating, I'm gonna guess that we're probably gonna do some estimation that's a little bit different than what created these answers here. 
And so we might estimate, we might get a good estimate, and then it might not be one of these numbers. So we're going to have to kind of see which one it's closest to. Okay, so we have the price of a day pass and the number of day passes. And we have the price of a week pass and the number of week passes. So if we were to estimate day passes, let's change that to 50. Great. Um, 4,432. Should we go to 4,500? Should we go down to 4,000? Let's start with just 4,000. That'll keep uh, multiplication real easy. We know that we went down and down on both of these numbers. So our estimate is, is looking to be less than the actual answer so far. So we're going to multiply those. We need to add that to, I might keep 110, just at 110. Uh, that's a fairly nice number. Could we make it 100? Sure. Um, and I'm going to multiply that by 1,000 uh, week passes. Okay, so this one was, you know, you know, exact. It didn't change at all, the 110, and this one's up a little bit. So that does kind of balance out our, our estimating here a little bit. Okay, so 5 times 4 is 20, and then we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, making that 200,000. And we're going to add um, 1,000 times 110, so we're going to have 11 with 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, so 110,000. So we added those together and we get 310,000. So yes, they probably even uh, maybe lowered their estimate. Maybe they rounded 110 down to 100 um, because that would have gotten us exactly the, the 300,000 estimate that we're looking for. Number three, simplify. We got an expression with a square root and a negative exponent. Okay, so there might be harder examples than this, but Let's see what we can do. Let's work from the inside out if we can. Square root of 4, well, that is just 2. So before we get to that negative exponent, I'm going to put the 2 here and put 4, 2 times 2, and so to the negative 2 power. Okay, here's what can get a little tricky. The negative 2 power is only on the 4. It's not on the 2 here. So with negative exponents, we like to move those in a way so that we have a positive exponent. So it's currently in the numerator, so it can move to the denominator and now have a positive exponent. So 4 to the negative 2 up top is the same as 4 to the positive 2 on the bottom. The 2 here stays up top. He wasn't uh, affiliated with that exponent there. All right, so that is really 2 over 16, which is 1 over 8. And yeah, that's letter A. That's our answer. Number 2 which is a factor of the trinomial x squared minus 2x minus 15? A factor. Okay, we need to know how to factor this trinomial. So you should recognize that this trinomial is quadratic, highest exponent is 2, the coefficient in front of the x squared is a 1. So when all of those things happen, we are looking for numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2. So you can start making your list, okay, multiplying to 15, it's like maybe 5 and 3. Okay, but how do we get negative 15. Well, one of them has to be negative. Should it be negative 3 and positive 5? Well, positive 5, negative 3, that would add to positive 2. So if we did negative 5 and positive 3, those would multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2. Okay, so once we have these two magic numbers, here's how we factor. We're going to be in the model where we have two binomials that both start with x, and the other uh, term in these binomials will be 1 is minus 5 and 1 is plus 3. We could FOIL that and we would find that it would turn out to be x squared minus 2x minus 15. Great. These are two factors. They're factors because they are multiplied by each other. So there's two factors. They asked us to pick which one of these is a factor. So it's only, we're, only, we're only looking for one of these to show up in this list of choices. So I don't see x minus 13 isn't one of mine. Ah, x minus 5, yeah not to be tricked with x plus 5 or x plus 13. So one of the factors was x minus 5. x plus 3 is another factor. It just wasn't listed as one of our choices. And the number one question that was missed, ooh, more factoring involved. And this time, we've got a quadratic over a quadratic, and we're trying to simplify it. Well, when we see these quadratics, you should be thinking about factoring it. So they're both like the last type. We have quadratics. We have 1 as the coefficient of the first number, so we're looking for numbers that multiply to the, the constant at the end, that c term, and add to the middle term, the b term. So what multiplies to the negative 10 that adds to negative 3? So that'll be x minus 5 and x plus 2. 
minus 5 and plus 2 add to negative 3 and multiply to negative 10. So that's our numerator. The denominator, they actually kind of gave away some of the, the, the story here. They said x can't be negative 4 or negative 2. And that's because if we put those in, we'd make division by 0. So two numbers that multiply to 8 that add to 6, that would be positive 4 and positive 2. <laughs> which means if I put negative 4 into this first group, I'd get 0. If I put negative 2 into the second group, I'd get 0. So that's why they're kind of showing those as problem cases. Now, if I look, oh, I've got an x plus 2 up top and bottom. Those can cancel out. So it leaves me with x minus 5 over x plus 4. Is that one of my options? Bing. There it is. Watch out for D. D is, you know, close to what we have, but uh, it is x minus 5 on top, x plus 4 on the bottom. And those are the top five most missed questions in the operations with real numbers and expressions.